Greetings everyone! In this video I want to show you how to properly lubricate a square frame or C-frame motor. These are found in small fans like in the bathroom vent fan, small electric fans, even in old vintage type record players, usually the lower cost ones, the record changers. And uh, there's one in this 4,000 watt electric heater. So I'll go through disassembling the motor and uh, proper application of the oil. So the type of oil I use is 3-in-1. You can also use the Zoom Spout. You don't want to use grease on these motors. You want to use oil. And to apply the oil, I like to use these little bottles that have a syringe. Normally they're used for gluing plastic together. You put the solvent in there. And they're from Craftix. They call it a plasticator. 25 gauge needle on it. And I like that because it's precision. The it applies the number of drops you want to put in and doesn't get all over. So without further ado, I'll uh, disassemble this heater and we'll get at the motor and uh, show the process of lubricating it. Okay, I removed the cover. There's just a screw on each side and it lifts straight off. This is a really nicely made heater. It's all metal, no plastic. Nice heavy support bracket, steel fan blades. Here's the nameplate if you're interested in it. 2005 it was made, so I had this thing for a while. But anyway, here's the motor. It's quite a bit larger than this one. And you can see here on this one the rotor is exposed. This one it is not. And that's good because these draw quite a bit of dust through them. And it's just one less way or vector for dust to get into the bearings and, you know, uh, gunk them up. Or this open design is not nearly as good. But anyway, what I need to do is remove this bracket here. I found an Allen wrench here to remove the fan. So uh, let me do that and come back. Okay, so the motor is now free. And keep track of the hardware so I don't lose anything for when I need to reassemble it. So now I'm going to take these bearings off of the motor. Okay, I removed the nuts. Set them over there. And it's kind of hard to do one-handed on camera, but I just want to pull the bearing out. I'm going to have to uh, loosen these first, but be very careful because there's spacers on the motor shaft. And if you're not paying attention, those will fall out and you could lose them. So let me get this off. I just can't do it holding a camera. And we'll take a look at the bearings. Okay, the bearings have been removed. And there's one thing you need to pay attention to. See that white washer thing in there? That's actually a spacer. That stayed in the bearing here. But it's not in this bearing because it's still on the motor shaft right here. It's a little, I guess it's a nylon spacer. Slide that off a little bit. Sometimes you'll find that the motor has more of these, so you want to be careful not to lose those when you disassemble the motor. Now, this motor has little ports. It has an, kind of a spongy absorbent material that holds oil. I can see there is oil in there. And you can periodically just add a couple drops and uh, maybe on the shaft too as well. You don't have to disassemble the motor, 
but if the motor hasn't been serviced in a while, it's a good idea to disassemble the motor all the way like this and check it. Make sure there's no gummed up lubricant because if it hasn't been serviced in a while, uh, you'll get gummed up lubricant. So if you take a Q-tip and you see that there's, this is really clean because I do service it. So if you do have gummed up lubricant in there that turns black and gooey, I'm going to put that, see I don't want to lose that thing, so I'm going to put that in there. So what you need to do is clean that out. I just use Q-tips and just like rubbing alcohol, the kind without the uh, the oil in it. The rubbing oil, just pure alcohol. Or maybe spray a little brake cleaner on there. And you clean it out until you don't get any more black. And use as many Q-tips as you need. Clean up the shaft as well. And it's ready for fresh lubricant. Okay, so now that the bearing's clean, which I really didn't have to do in my case, I'm just going to add a few drops of oil in the bearing area. And, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to put a drop onto the shaft as well. It doesn't hurt anything. I did move that spacer over here so I don't lose it. And you might want to uh, add a few drops into here. Make sure it's got plenty of oil. And that side's done and we'll do this bearing as well and begin assembling it. Okay, the motor's assembled. Making sure the, all the washers and the nuts and bolts and everything are in the correct order. Turns freely. One thing I should mention is make sure this motor frame or this core doesn't get flipped around because if you do, the motor will spin backwards. So I marked it here with a little arrow. Of course, the wires come in from the back side, so that's one indication. But I marked it with an arrow for the fan side so I know that it's assembled correctly. So go ahead and get it reassembled into the heater, test it out. Okay, it's all back together, except for the cover, of course. So then I put the fan on. Now this shaft had a flat spot on it, so I had to be sure to align it with the screw here. And once I got it on there, I tightened it down. So then I put everything together and just give it a quick spin. And it's spinning freely. It's not bumping anything. Sometimes you have to position the, the fan blades. Good time to clean the blades if there's a lot of dust on them. Or a lot of dust in the unit. And we're not too bad here. So I'll go ahead and put the cover on and test. Okay, so I set the heater back in my little work area here that I like to spot heat. Plugged it in. And let's turn it on. working just fine. So that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.